This is Tyler McCoy. I'm going to continue the video of the slicers concept. The research has shown us that it is critical to understand and be able to identify flow paths on the fire ground. Fire officers should become accustomed to recognizing open doors and windows, on arrival, and fire conditions, including the neutral plane if fire is visible. When fires are vent limited, a tactic may include withholding ventilation until hose lines are in place. This will help limit fire growth until crews are ready for cooling and extinguishing. This can be as simple as closing an open door or waiting to create building openings. Flow path control devices are now available on the market to assist with controlling and limiting air movement in the fire building. These may be applied on exterior openings or inside the building to limit the threat of rapid fire growth. Identification and control of flow path is a critical step to improving firefighter safety. Identifying the flow path is extremely important. Firefighters are going to make openings in order to be able to put the fire out. They need to be able to decide whether they want to control those openings or just know that they're in the flow path and operate safely and quickly in that condition. There's many things you can do. You might want to close the door before you go in to choke the fire to stop allowing the fire to have the oxygen to build up and develop. Uh, you may want to use door control when you send a search crew in or the hose crew in, keeping somebody at the door to do number one, accountability, sound the exit for them, and limit the air so it slows down the fire development if you have to go in that way. If you have an option to go in and not be on the exhaust portion of the flow path, but on the inlet of the flow path, that's certainly the best choice. How many times have we heard fire chiefs that have sustained a line of duty death in their department the following week during the funerals making statements of how rapidly conditions change? It's all about a change of ventilation that resulted from the firefighters being in a safe place to being in the exhaust portion of the flow between where the fire is and where the fire wants to go. Once the fire has been located in the building and the flow path has been managed, the next step is to cool the superheated compartments and reduce the thermal threat to firefighters via flashover. Using the information gained during size up and to locate the fire step, the company officer determines the best place to cool the fire in a manner that is safe for their crew. This is entirely dependent on the building construction and the fire conditions at that time. There's no such thing as always attack the fire from the outside or the inside. It's the decision that the company officer makes based on the conditions. We have found that in most residential settings, we've been able to apply a fairly direct attack from the exterior. In a few rare occasions, we've been unable to hit hallways or closets, but for the most part, we we're able to cool that superheated compartment, allowing our firefighters to get inside. Once the fire has been cooled, it is vital that firefighting crews make entry into the building to fully extinguish the fire. Failure to make a timely attack at the seat of the fire can result in dangerous fire growth. Crews must be conditioned to move quickly to assure the fire is extinguished. One thing that we learned in developing the slicers concept is we were very good at advancing hose lines. We lacked a little efficiency in removing hose lines or backing them and carrying them in a different direction. Therefore, on the drill ground, we drop the initial hose line. The pump operator has a backup line set for us, for us to enter and continue our firefighting efforts. During the extinguishment phase, crews enter the building and resume what can be considered as traditional tactical operations. The fire must be completely extinguished and the building overhauled to assure no rekindles. Additionally, primary and secondary searches should be conducted as normal to ensure no one is in the building. This completes the sequential process of the slicer's concept. It leads us to the actions of opportunity, rescue and salvage. Sequential process of the slicer's concept. It leads us to the actions of opportunity, rescue and salvage. These may occur at any point during the incident, depending on the situation. Rescue remains the highest priority of the fire department when operating at a structure fire. The information gained during size-up dictates where rescue falls into the incident priorities. 
When we arrive on the scene and have confirmed entrapment, we will obviously make rescue our highest priority. However, when we arrive in a residential setting and we're met by the occupants who can confirm that their entire family and their pets are accounted for, we move rescue to a lower priority. This gives us the ability, as we always would, to conduct our primary and secondary search, but only after the thermal threat has been reduced. The challenge for departments operating with limited staffing is when three firefighters arrive with active fire and a known rescue situation. In a perfect world, the department would have the staffing to allow for simultaneous tactics, initiating a search and rescue effort while reducing or removing the thermal threat at the same time. But with limited staffing, the company officer is forced to make uncomfortable choices. Which tactic is the priority? To protect the occupants, removing them from the structure, or knocking down the fire threat to remove the hazard? With limited staffing, we've learned to adjust. We have the pump operator do what he can to reduce the thermal threat, while the officer and the firefighter work to remove trapped occupants based on a vent and isolate search technique. The fire service has become familiar with the concept of vent inner search. Given the lessons learned through the fire dynamics research, we've learned the importance of using a closed door to prohibit flow paths and controlling fire growth. To reinforce that lesson, isolate has been added to the vent inner search concept to create the VEIS method. It is important to train firefighters to close the door when searching a room to ensure a flow path is not created during the search process. We take the information gathered throughout our scene size up and from occupants at the fire to determine the most likely location where occupants may be trapped. We then rapidly enter that space, close the door in an effort to control the fire flow path. During a VEIS operation, isolating that flow path is extremely important because the moment that door gets controlled, it will immediately improve conditions in the room where you're searching and going to potentially find a victim. Another place where door control is extremely important is in the case of vent, enter, isolate, and search. Uh, you don't want to change the ventilation condition until you're ready to make entry to the room. So the idea of taking the ladder and breaking the window before you climb up to the top of the ladder is not a good idea. You want to foot the ladder, uh, get it to the sill, go up, decide if you still want to make entry to the room, look at conditions in the room, take that window, and then immediately go to get the door closed if the door is not closed already. Otherwise, you're putting yourself and the victim in that exhaust portion of the flow path, and conditions, tenable conditions, are going to deteriorate very rapidly in terms of toxic gases and increased heat levels in that room. And so it's very critical that when you make that entry, you use that door to cut off the flow path. And you can cut off the flow path with the door at either an inlet or an outlet. Either end, you can stop it up. Salvage rounds out the slicer's method. Firefighters using everything from compartmentalization to salvage covers to protect property to the greatest extent possible. Remember to close doors as you move through the structure to limit smoke and water damage. Many asked, where does the previous Recio versus method developed by Lloyd Lehman fit? Ask, where does the previous Recio versus method developed by Lloyd Lehman fit with the slicer's method? We found that Recio VS still makes a lot of sense from a command perspective. As the first arriving battalion chief, it's critical that I use Recio VS to recall the incident priorities in an effort to ensure that rescue is made, exposures are managed, and extinguishment takes place. So Slicers is being used by our initial arriving company officers, and Recio VS can still be used by our commanding officers for overall priorities. So to review, the slice section is designed to occur in order and is typically carried out by the first arriving engine company. The R and S for rescue and salvage may occur at any time depending on the needs of the incident. As the formal incident command post is established, the Recio versus concept still applies, guiding the overall strategies of the incident. The slicers method is an example of how one department incorporated the lessons from the fire dynamic research into their tactics to improve firefighter safety. The challenge for fire departments around the world is to incorporate these lessons in a way that works for them at the local level. Slices, we so how are we going to implement the transitional fire attack at the Dayton Fire Department? The Dayton Fire Department should implement the transitional fire attack using the SLICERS acronym for first arriving fire companies to a structure fire. This will increase the safety of firefighters and the citizens of Dayton. 
To properly implement this system, several items must occur. The first item is to change the tactics manual. The tactics manual is based on what firefighters do at all working incidents in the cities, including fires. We need to change the tactics manual to amend the current section stating crews will attack the fire from the unburned side and replace with wording that states first arriving fire companies will implement a transitional attack using the SLICERS acronym. The second thing that must occur is training. The first part of that training will be online. We use a program known as CenterLearn that we do a lot of our continuing education. We will create a CenterLearn training module for fire crews to learn about the history of the transitional fire attack concept, key points to implementing this transitional fire attack, and then uh, crews will take and must pass a quiz at the end of the subject matter. The last part will be hands-on training. Firefighters learn by completing tasks with their hands. All crews will attend the Dayton Fire Department Training Center a uh, day-long exercise. The first part will be conducted in the training classroom where crews will review slicers videos. They'll watch the scientific evidence videos of NIST and UL conducting their research into the transitional fire attack and why we are going to implement this system. Crews will then take part in live burn evolutions on the training grounds implementing and practicing the slicers concept and other aspects of the transitional fire attack. Every crew will uh, participate in this hands-on training, and we will not implement the slicers concept until all firefighters have been trained and feel comfortable implementing this slicers transitional fire attack. There are skeptics to this. Uh, the age of the thinking firefighter. It used to be said that we've always done it this way. The fire service is 150 years of tra uh, tradition unimpeded by progress. Well now we have science that says the things we're doing is wrong and we must change them. Over 100 firefighters die every year in line of duty. This is unacceptable. We must reduce this. We must increase the number of civilians that are successfully rescued from a structure fire that make a full recovery. And with the transitional fire attack studies, the slicers concept, the controlling the flow paths and hitting a fire from the outside, will accomplish the safety of firefighters and the citizens of Dayton. Thank you.